just want to wish you a happy Easter. I am so pumped for what's about to happen. But before we get started, there's only one thing that you need to know. Easter Jam is for everybody in your family. So if you're a teenager, this is for you. Younger kids, we're about to have some serious fun and I need you to lead the way. Adults, this is an Easter like you've never done it before. The only way not to have fun is to not participate. So look around, is there anyone missing? If so, hit that pause button now and go get them. Cause we're gonna get started in three, two, and one. Easter, a time for fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies. And then there are the weird parts of Easter, like fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies, which is interesting. But what does all this stuff have to do with Easter? And if this holiday is about more than candy and wearing uncomfortable clothes to church and lunch with your relatives, what makes Easter happy? Okay, the way I see it, there are two different kinds of people in the world. People who love these things and people like me. I just don't get it. I don't see how you can eat something so cute and sticky. All right, families, I need to know how you feel. If you love these things, give me a thumbs up. Not so much, thumbs down. Okay, okay, okay. I know there's a lot of different opinions on the matter, but no matter whether you like eating peeps or not, here's what you're gonna love. You're gonna love how much fun we're gonna have with these things. First, I'm gonna explain what to do, and then I'm gonna tell you when to get started. First things first, you're gonna divide your family into two teams. Team A is gonna get Peep A, Team B is gonna get Peep B. You're going to get two toothpicks, and you're gonna put one in one Peep and one in the other. Make sure they're in the front of the Peep so that they look like they're facing each other. Your toothpick is going to act like a lightsaber, a sword, or a joust. This is going to be the greatest peep jousting competition of all time. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to put both of your peeps on a microwave safe plate. No social distancing necessary. In fact, the closer they are, the better. Make sure that they are facing each other. And here's where we're going to have some fun. You're going to pop these peeps into the microwave. You're going to set the timer for 45 seconds. Don't worry, you're not gonna let it run that long. In fact, I highly recommend that you don't. 45 seconds, then hit start. Watching from a safe distance, you are going to look at the peeps until you see that one of the peeps has dropped its sword and the other one has touched the other. So the first peep to touch the other peep with its sword or toothpick is the winner. Immediately stop the microwave I highly recommend this, and decide which team is the winner. Okay, it's time to settle this thing. Don't forget to snap a picture of the final finish. It's go time. Press pause and I'll wait right here. How'd it go? Who won? I want pictures. Either post the pictures to the Facebook event or send them to me in a personal text. I have to admit, that was way more fun than I thought, and this happened. <laughs> Are you guys ready for another game? For this one, you're gonna need a laundry basket and socks. Lots and lots of socks. Maybe even pretty socks like Pastor Jeremy's. <laughs> Doesn't matter if they're clean or dirty, just go ahead and grab those. If you need a second, you can pause the video, and I'll be back to explain the rest. All right, family, do you have your basket and socks? Lots and lots of socks? Great. Now pick two people from your family to play the game. Don't worry, you guys can rotate as much as you want. You'll also need at least one other person in your family to be scorekeeper. Here's how you're gonna play. You're gonna take the socks and you're gonna dump them on one side of the room. Don't worry, they'll make their way back to the basket eventually. The basket will be on the other side of the room. When I say go, players, as quickly as possible, are gonna find a match within the pile very quickly, <laughs> make it go into a ball or an Easter egg, 
and then as fast as possible, throw that Easter egg ball into the basket. The player with the most balls into the basket, or Easter basket, is the winner. Scorekeepers, this is where you come in. Families, if you don't have someone to be the scorekeeper, that's okay. You're just going to go on the honor system. I'm looking at you, parents. All right, if you need to go grab all those things and get to position, that's fine. Pause the video here and I'll wait. Everybody ready? We're putting a 60 second timer on the clock. This Easter egg throwdown is happening in three, two, one, and go. <laughs> In the beginning, God created everything. He formed people in His very own image. But then, we turned away from God. Sin entered the world, like a dark stain. Still, God loved us so deeply that He made a plan to rescue us. At just the right moment, God sent His very own Son, Jesus, to live among us. Jesus healed hearts, and minds, and bodies. Thousands gathered to hear him teach. Instead of giving lots of new rules, Jesus turned things upside down by making it simple. Love God, love others. After three years of traveling and teaching, Jesus and his disciples entered Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover feast. Huge crowds gathered to welcome him. But while the crowds cheered for Jesus, the religious leaders made plans to arrest him. He was turning their world upside down, and they wanted him gone. As Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his friends, he told them that he would be leaving, but would return. His friends didn't understand. That night, one of Jesus' followers, Judas, led soldiers to arrest him. The religious leaders gave Jesus a fake trial and then sent him to Pilate, the Roman governor, who could have him killed. Pilate found Jesus had broken no law and tried to release him. But a mob called for Jesus to be killed. Pilate gave in 
and handed Jesus over to the Roman soldiers. Jesus was forced to carry the heavy beams of his own wooden cross. On a hill called Golgotha, the soldiers nailed Jesus' hands and feet to the rough wood. The soldiers and people who passed by laughed and mocked him. But from the cross, Jesus asked God to forgive them. Finally, Jesus called out, It is finished. Then he died. The earth shook. Rocks split open. Even the soldiers cried, Surely he was the Son of God. One of Jesus' followers took his body and placed it in a tomb cut from the rock. A huge stone blocked the entrance. Jesus' friends were devastated. They had believed that Jesus was the one God promised, the one who would rescue them. But now he was gone. Their whole world had turned upside down. Jesus' friends stayed hidden in fear for three days. But early Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene, a close friend of Jesus, hurried to the tomb. She planned to anoint Jesus' body with special spices. As Mary neared the tomb, she saw the stone had been rolled away. The tomb was empty. Mary turned to see a man standing near. She didn't recognize him until he said, Mary, it was Jesus, alive. Jesus told her, do not hold on to me. I have not yet ascended to the Father. Instead, go to those who believe in me. Jesus, God's Son, became like us to lay down his life. Through God's power, he defeated death for all of us, and sin was washed away. One day, he's promised to return so we can live with him forever. Wow, I hear that story every Easter and it always amazes me. I mean, God sent his son Jesus to the world to remind me that I can face anything bad that happens in my world. The fact that Jesus rose from the dead is proof that I can handle anything bad that happens. I like to think about it like this. I can because Jesus is alive. I can be brave because Jesus is alive. I can keep loving because Jesus is alive. I can have hope because Jesus is alive. Here's an idea. I want, to get, want you to get together with your family and I want you to think about how you would fill in the blank. I can because Jesus is alive. I want you to pause this video while you discuss it and meet me right back here. Awesome. Having conversations like these helps me remember that what God has done in the past can help me handle what's going on in my life right now and to trust in him. I hope that's true for you too. And I hope you spend the rest of the day making really awesome, happy memories with your family. Here's a last challenge for you. I want you to decide who the technology genius is in your family. You got it? Awesome. Now, I want you and your family to go outside if possible, and I want you to take a family Easter photo. This could be all dressed up or in your PJs. It could be a traditional photo, or it could be one of those filters that puts bunny ears on it. Either way, I just want you to go to the Facebook page and post it, or send that picture to me in a personal text so I can see your family's Easter style. Maybe now more than ever is the time to celebrate God's faithfulness and the hope that he gives us in Jesus. After all, that's really what makes Easter so happy. Shout
shout it out Jesus is alive He's alive Oh, happy day, happy day You wash my sin away Oh, happy day, happy day I'll never be the same See 